Welcome back guys, game number 4 is here, Team Empire against Team Liquid in the D2CL Season 6 Grand Finals. I'm Durka, joining me is Clairvoyance, and we just had a pretty long game, not, not real game time, but a lot of pauses, and Empire have got a stand-in, so Flo has been replaced by Mega P, is what we've been told to call this player, so we'll uh, find out how they do with him, but Clairvoyance, game number 3, Empire showed up, they actually played Dota. Oh yeah, they most certainly did, and on the back of a very, very strong draft coming out of Resolution, who had a very fearsome Invoker after going Super Saiyan in Game 4, Game 3, pardon me, uh, was able to pull it through, and Silent, of course, picking up the Gyrocopter again, and having a very, very good time with that game as well. Now Liquid decides to pick up the Gyrocopter, and with the Gyrocopter, Clockwork is always a potential pickup, because not only do they complement each other, but Clockwork seems to be very good against Gyrocopter as well, in some ways. So, first time we've seen it in the first phase, however. Five seconds remain. Yeah, interesting stuff. Now, Undying banned by Team Liquid. Don't want to be dealing with that nonsense again. But Who's I feel like uh, if they just go for some raw aggression and heroes Team that can Liquid's contest enemy jungle, like, it's their play style. You know, 15, 20 minutes, they go and take control of the enemy jungle. They have strong lanes. They can roam around with Jirax especially, but a little bit from Kuroki. This, uh, this clockwork for my control can be good. But they need active heroes, I feel, to really fulfill their potential as a team themselves. So Matumba Man Gyrocopter can definitely play into that. Hit level 7 or 8, I mean, maybe even level 6 if you want to. TP around, use cooldown, find team fights and potential pickoffs if you want to. Take a look at that Empire, ban out the Viper. A decent hero against the Queen of Pain. Razor could still be a pickup for Liquid here. I mean, Slardar probably isn't going to weasel its way in because it's banned out in the first phase by Empire. But uh, Liquid... We talked about in game number one and game number two, where I believe, I think I think it was game number one, Empire picked up three cores in the first three. Team Liquid could go that road here themselves, but I, I still feel the same kind of thing. It's, it's going to weaken your overall lanes and open yourself up and be susceptible to Empire kind of figuring you out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As, as a matter of fact, if they pick their tricore here and they don't have a Huskar counter, we know what's coming, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've seen it here in this series already and a very strong opener, of course with Liquid taking a very convincing game on, on the back of that Huskar, but now they have the Queen of Pain, the hero we haven't seen come through in any of the games so far in this series, and not many games, you know, you mentioned the other day, I think it's the most picked and most banned hero this patch. It's like a 100% pick ban rate, I think. It's just a, such a strong, well-rounded hero that gives you the lane security most of the time, can go in multiple different positions, and that ultimate, ever since it's, it's gotten that uh, BKB piercing buff, you know, it's always guaranteed damage that you're going to throw out in the fight. Okay, well, what are they going to head into now? Well, it's taken a long time thinking about this one. I mean, they've got a bunch of support still out there. You know, there's heroes like Witch Doctor, which have been very good for Team Liquid. Ancient Apparition, okay, well, you can give that to Kuroki. And if you do have Team Empire having mobile heroes that kind of like to jump into a team fight and engage, you know, they engage very heavily. They snowball in, they have a secondary form of hero to go into the snowball to get that additional stun, lockdown, Queen of Pain from a distance with Sonic Wave, maybe blinking aggressively in. The fact that you've got Vortex slowing people down, amplifying the damage from the gyro, from the clockwork, and maybe even other sources, really is uh, kind of a, a disaster zone for Empire if they do get a little bit too deep behind Tier 1s, Tier 2s, and play a little bit too aggressively into it. But there's still heroes out there like Dazzle that can save people up, you know, keep them up and running with the Grave. And it's it's always a little bit rough picking sustain heroes into AA, I feel. you know We, we saw Dazzle oh yeah. Juggernaut in Game 2, and they just got ruined by the Ice Blast. Yeah, yeah. Stazzle's definitely not a, not the best pick against Ancient Apparition. And it's the second time Liquid pick it up here in this series. I feel like every time I've seen them pick it up so far, they had the Gyrocopter. And I feel like they do it because uh, they realize that they ran the Huskar into the Gyrocopter in Game 1. And they know about the powers of it because Gyro is a hero that's very reliant on the magic damage to be able to farm and get kills early on with the cooldown and barrage. And I think they just pick it up by for insurance sake as well, saying that, uh, hey, you know, once we pick up this hero, you're not going to Huskar no matter what we pick, uh, or most likely anyway. So we're just going to go on ahead and just open up the draft for the last two picks. We have an AA that's uh, not particularly bad in most situations either. It's just somewhat weak in the lane, but once you pass that, it's one of the strongest supports in the game. So they'll set themselves up for that, and Wyvern is banned, so they can't have the AA, Wyvern, Gyro, Trialing like they did before, but... There is no one dying in the picture either, so I'm not sure if they need it. Five yeah, no one dying to be that nasty combo with the Tusk. So Clockwork at this point. 
At, at this point, you're still unsure where the Queen of Pain's going because not only is it a good hero for resolution mid, but Silent has shown that he can play that safe lane as well. And it's the same with a number of other heroes. You know, the Brewmaster is one that comes to mind a lot. We've seen OG pick that up from time to time where they, uh, they have the Beastmaster for No-Tail. Team Liquid have picked it up for Kuroki a little bit as well. You know, have that roaming support Brewmaster. And it's one of those heroes that can really cause mm -hmm. havoc in team fights. And if you've got, you know, the Cyclone team to throw out onto a Gyro early on, you've got the Blink Clap onto a Lina, something like that could potentially work for Empire here. But Team Liquid, Lina, AA, Gyro, and you've got to love this combination. Ice Blast, Laguna Blade, you, dem you, you obliterate one hero. That, that's numbers advantage straight off the bat if you land those two spells. And of course, Laguna Blade, point and click, you're going to land it as long as you don't hit it on a creep or a catapult or something. But they've got tons of lockdown and team fight Ten AoE. Laning phase looks okay for them as well. And I guess Lina's a dynamic Five hero in her own right. Remaining. You don't know fully if she's going to be that mid hero for Fata. It's very likely, I feel, but it still could be that four roll support. Oh, yeah. Although I, I would be hesitant to run A as well as Lina because yeah. you really want to take advantage of the chilling touch, and Lina's animation is already terrible. So if you add minus attack speed to that, it's going to be very hard to land right clicks, period. But uh, it's certainly a possibility. In my head, it's going to be mid for sure because they want to run it against the Queen of Pain. It's just one of the few heroes that can actually beat the Quap or at least stay even. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's not the best hero against Tusk, but it is Alina at the end of the day. So long as you can cast your spells and maintain your distance, you're going to do a hell of a lot of work in the team fights. I think notable heroes out there still, things like the Spirit Breaker, pretty good against these heroes. Charge in, you can trade hits decently with the AA. And if you, uh, you have that Spirit Breaker Bane lane, which we've seen from time to time as well. You can do a ton of work there, but Silent gets his Juggernaut team again. Turn to I like it this time. I didn't like it the first time, but uh, it could, because at that point when they picked it, they had like no way of scaling whatsoever. And so in that sense, Juggernaut was okay because they could all, all in faster with uh, better than with any other one position hero. This game, I think, I, I don't doubt its ability to scale. You know, you're going to be going up against the Yule's Lina most likely, so you won't be able to get free Omni Slashes there. But bad. if you look at Liquid's lineup, Unless they get a perfect jump with a stun initiation, they're going to have a hard time bringing this guy down, especially through a spin. And if he builds the right items, he can definitely carry. Yeah, I, I guess I was thinking about lane, uh, kind of the laning phase for Jug. Clockwork does decently there with the cogs push back. Mana burn is incredibly annoying. But then you factor in the Bane, Nightmare into Blade Fury, and Gyrocopter, uh, sorry, the, the Clockwork, will find difficulties actually getting the cog block and escape just because the Team Empire can reposition themselves really nicely to get inside the cogs themselves. Now, right, uh, right. Uh, worth, worth looking at is actually the stand-in here, um, Mega P from Team Empire. He had his name tagged up as XX5, which is 25, and that was Solo's old, te old team. I don't, I don't know if they've reformed or anything like that, but he's tagged himself up Five as 25, and that, that was the team with King R, Shachlow, Nexus, Solo, and it did pretty decently back in the day. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. start of this year. I'm just wondering if uh, if it's someone you know we know, or if it is just uh, a Russian player that they've grabbed at the last second. So well, you know, he's an unknown. He is the unknown factor here. And Team Liquid can't base drafts around him. They can't say, well, we'll you know specifically target bans against this guy because he plays a he, he plays a mean Night Stalker. He's annoying on this hero. It's just like right, we'll ban the Darks here because that's one that's still left out there. It's Going to be annoying against Ten Sonic Wave, Shards, remaining. things like that. And Team Liquid, okay. Team Disruptor Empire's against Quop, against Bane. Be. Pretty good. I mean, then they've also got some form of initiation against the Juggernaut. If they can land the Static Storm and then into the cooldown, the uh, Clockwork Hookshot. They've got good ways of controlling him. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if I'm Empire and I, or Resolution, I look at Liquid's lineup, I feel like Nyx Assassin would be a very fitting hero. Uh, not only does it uh, ramp up the amount of aggression they can toss out with the Queen of Pain, Ten Tusk, and the Juggernaut remaining. walking around the map, but it can also just give you a lot of vision in general because Liquid, when they're farming on their heroes, most of the time you know where they're farming. It's just going to be in their woods or in their lanes, and I, I think I think it gives them the map control they want as well. I mean, they could go Night Stalker as well. It's also a pretty good pick here, but Night Stalker is one of those heroes. Like If you don't get a good lane as an offlaner, you're going to have a hard time. And They offer a Brewmother again. Um, well, I say again, although Liquid was the one that picked it up previously, it's a uh, it's a decent brood game. I mean, disruptor and ancient apparition they kind of look like free food for spiderlings, but they they are going up against a gyrocopter, clockwork rocket flare, and Lena's ability to just push out the wave with the uh, with her dragon slave. 
and of course the disruptor who's able to pick off the broodmother with a dust. You can just glimpse back the broodmother. So I'm not sure how successful this broodmother pick will be. We'll have to find out on this one. Yeah, we we saw mind controls brood against this exact lane almost, just disruptor against gyro, and he mm -hmm, got pretty exactly. much demolished. Kinetic field, glimpse, dust, like you said. They did expend a lot of sentries and things early on to try and shut him down, but it definitely worked out for them. Yeah, they, they did shut him down, so it, it worked out perfectly, I think. And I think if Liquid does the same thing, this Broodmother is going to have a relatively no follow-up, I would say. And I guess, the, I guess the drawback, if Liquid invests too much resources, though, is that the Juggernaut might be able to push the tower. Can we make Remake? Okay, well, we'll head okay. ourselves into the new game. But... Uh, Lena mid doesn't really have too much help, I feel. The supports from Liquid don't lend themselves to the kind of roaming and, you know, aiding their mid hero. There's no Winter Wyvern, no Witch Doctor, no Dazzle. Nothing to really get in there and get their hands dirty. So it's going to come down to, like, reactive plays, maybe TPing into save. Whereas the Bane Elemental moving towards mid can set up for the Queen of Pain nicely. The Tusk roaming around with Shards and Snowball. The Lena has to be quick on her feet because those initiation tools from Team Empire could be devastating. Mm -hmm. right. New uh, lobby. And we go. It's amazing. All, all the casters are in there already. Every single one. So quick. So quick. Yeah, even before the players. No, yeah, not a single player is there, and they're the ones that asked for the remake. No. <laughs> Just kidding around. And, uh, they'll, uh, they'll join themselves in. But ag again, like game number three, I feel like Empire have a solid draft this time. You know, we, we saw weaknesses in game number one and game number two. Maybe the one weakness, like you pointed out, is the Broodmother potentially. But that can be that can be rectified by swapping up your lanes. You know, you look for the favorable matchup, which could maybe be against the Clockwork. I, ha I have seen Clockworks win in a 1v1 against Broodmother twice. And yeah, they, they can be Brutes. You just have to max the rocket. Yeah. And with a stealth shield, they don't take enough damage for Brute to zone out the clock. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's a potential. But you've kind of got to know the matchup. I feel you've got to you know, know what you're doing and when to do it. Because if you do go right. for sort of like, you know, cogs to push back and you mess around doing finicky plays instead of just, like you said, the standard rocket flare, spam it out as much as you can, get you know, a, a stout shield, a bottle, and just regen yourself up as often as you can. And I think Tranquil Boots plays a big part in that as well, the additional armor and HP regen you get, just trying to sustain through uh, spawn spiraling spam, stuff like that. It can be incredibly important, but I don't know. As Empire, would you try and get that matchup, or do you just kind of put Brood against the trial lane and say, you know what, deal with it, draw their attention down to bottom lane, make sure that we can roam mid onto the Lena? thing is, uh, if Empire try to go for that matchup, then they're going to be forced to aggro try or just follow the follow around the tri lane of um, of liquid, and that tri lane um, that tri lane versus tri lane it it can actually just go both ways. It probably depends entirely on who gets the first jump, because both teams have enough damage to just take down one target with a burst. Because juggernaut, if you get the tusk balled in and bane focuses the target, you're gonna spin and you're gonna take down whoever. But liquid can do the same as well because they have chilling touch on three heroes. They have Rocket Barrage, oh, yeah. and they have a Disruptor that can either Static Field to just zone out some targets, or use a Thunder Strike to do some more damage. Guys, we will remake Captain's Mode. What? Okay, they have to ban and pick the same heroes again. Interesting. Okay. Well, looks like we'll, uh, we'll head back in Captain's Mode, and get things back okay. underway. I'll have to pick and ban. That's weird. Yeah, I've, n I've never seen anyone do that before. Usually it's just like remake all pick, pick the same heroes, get yourself into game, let's roll. But mm -hmm. there we go, game has started. Let's just switch over to that now and I can I can shuffle myself over <laughs> over to the second PC. Get myself over here, just wheeling my chair. And then we're good. Okay. So, the Radiant against the Dire. They do not have their team name set up. Hopefully we don't have to remake for that. Should be okay. No more pauses. No more delays. Let's get this game underway. Game number four, best of five. I'm, uh, I'm starting to wonder if we will go to five. You know, Liquid started off so bloody strong. It's kind of interesting to see Empire suddenly get the fire in their belly and bring things Team back a little Empire's bit. But uh, there shouldn't be, shouldn't be anything out of the ordinary in this draft. You know, I think we can predict it. <laughs> 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 Team 
they were told to ban and pick exactly the same heroes. I, I think they're they're going to pick the same heroes. I'm banning them for the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is fair. I mean, Empire took out the Kunkka, and uh, it only makes sense that Liquid takes out the arch enemy of the Kunkka. Tidehunter. Uh, you're right. What about the Pudge, though? Like, Pudge isn't really a meta pick. You don't see people oh, play see, it. Oh, Pudge is the bane of all existence. When you take out that hero, then you have to remove Slaughter, which is also the bane of all existence. <gasps> okay, what's the next ban? Techies or something? Team Liquid, search for Techies. Ban it. Come on. You know you want to. Oh, come on. The no, that's a Naga Siren. Match. Yeah, see? No, no need Techies ban here. Come on. You've got to ban Techies. Any game you can, just remove him. Even, even if he's been nerfed. Still even if he's been it. nerfed. Right? Yeah, just get I mean, I'm just glad I see less of the hero in general. Yeah, I, I honestly don't see him at all. I used to see him in yeah. like every third or fourth pub, there'll be a Techies player on oh, my I, team. I used to see it every game, man. Oh, every really? game, last pick. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> because there aren't the players, like, it's not like a Doom or Slaughter, like, anybody can play. It's just one of those, like, niche heroes that if you play Techies, you're a Techies player. If you're not, you don't play Techies. But it's always, like, the 7k MMR guy that plays Techies. It's like I'm, I'm gonna play techies. Like, okay, you, you're gonna put our best player on our team to play that hero. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see how it you. It was do. a game-winning hero, for yeah. spans at the international. True, very true. Right. Oh, Flo, Flo is back. Yeah, that's why they remade, right? Okay. I, I didn't see. I was, uh, I was over on the other PC. I didn't, uh, didn't see why. Oh yeah, you're juggling around between yeah. places, huh? Okay, that, that's that's pretty good for them then. So they've got yeah. flow now on the Broodmother. Okay, well, weapon Y, Aloha Dance, Tusk, Resolution, Queen of Pain, Silent Juggernaut, and No Fear on the Bane. And uh, here we go again. Here we go again. Jirax Disruptor. Okay, so who... Uh, okay, Kuroki on the Ancient Apparition this time around. Mind Control, Clockwork. Head up the top in a little bit, but Matuma Man, the Gyrocopter and Fata playing the Lena. <laughs> The scribbling and scrolling on the map has begun. So one sentry, one observe ward for the Broodmother. Solving recipe. Relatively ordinary start. Sometimes we see the double sentry given to her. Um, but she bought her own tangos, and there's no pool tangos here. It's going to be a little bit easier just to get that sort of snipe off on the sentries if you place your one, if you place your one nicely. Right. That should all be good. Okay. Here we go. Oh, mother. Now, what's what's the purpose behind this? Sometimes we see players go and place the web over on the rune spot to actually catch it out and try and steal it. Yep. Or you place the web, you know, over in this area onto these trees. Why do you think Flo has gone over to the east? Oh, doing what he's doing. Yeah. Oh, he's just investing for a better lane to survive this trial lane that he's facing up against. He has to stay in the woods. If he ever gets in vision, he's just gonna die. I think. So okay. what he's doing is perfectly fine. Normally, I actually see the web placed a little deeper. And then the other one would be in the subsequent spot where you pointed out the ward earlier, like the observer ward that they placed on in yeah. game three on the side of Empire. Uh, that's where the other web would be because he has to connect into his tower. There, I saw the little observer ward over in this area just scouting out. So bounty runes, one apiece. Lena and Queen of Pain both get their hands on them. Nice juicy little bit of experience in gold. But look at this. Jirax is waiting in the web with sentries already. And he's not leveled anything up just yet. He could go for the Thunder Strike, but equally, Kinetic Field here to set up for like a rocket barrage or something. I wonder, does Broodmother know about this? The webs? He's going to be able to connect himself into them. The sentries dropped and Flo will get in vision range of Jirax, I think, there. Unless he juked himself past just in time and it looks like he'll get back behind the trees and hide himself just enough. Uh, this defensive trial lane can't really catch him, can't really find him. So it's going to be leeching levels and experience here as much as you can from Flo. Trying not to give too much away. Up at top. Mind control in a 1v1 against Silent for now. While no fear, we'll try and stack and pull. Control lane equilibrium. But it's the mid lane. This Tusk, he's got free reign to roam towards mid onto this leaner. And this is the trouble that I kind of saw. Is Fata doesn't have too much help from the rest of his supports. Yeah, this is the Broodmother effect. This is why the pick used to be picked so, uh, so strong in the first phase. The fact that he's forcing both supports to just sit in the lane and split the EXP between three heroes is already a pretty good thing. And I guess the issue now is that he's zoned out of his tower, but hey, he has a port ready. So he can just port in. <laughs> yep, there oh, it is. There we go, back to the tier one, and back into the webs. But this does leave him open to sentry wars being placed. And the lane is actually going to try and reset here. 
the equilibrium should meet, uh, you know, kind of this area, a little bit further back, outside the webs, and they're on cooldown for a good 30 seconds. Unless, unless the wave doesn't die fast enough. It looks like it will still push a little bit further forward. Web will be available just behind it. Doesn't push as far as I really thought it would. Well, middle lane, there was some aggression towards Fata. Not quite enough, as Resolution salves up, and Fata does have a salve of his own to keep himself running and healthy. And it's just this Tusk effect. Roaming in, causing havoc with the level 1 Ice Shards. Gyrocopter is free falling bottom lane though, 13 for 3. There's no one really contesting him up at the top there. Lena is you know, keeping even with the Queen of Pain, even with the aggression from the Tusk coming in. Mm -hmm. Again, one of, the, one of the heroes that can actually fight up against the Queen of Pain. Even with the hill advantage for the co-op, she can't just walk up and fight the Lina because of the right-click exchanges as well as the potential stun. But Bala doesn't have any more mana because he used, his, used all of it to grab his bottle as soon as possible, and he has it coming now. So that's good. Where's the second Radiant Observer ward? Still inside Jirax's inventory. They haven't placed it yet. Oh, okay. I was just wondering because, you know, we were talking about it the other game that Liquid loved that high ground ward at mid. And look at yep. this, the Dyer actually trying to de ward a ward that isn't there. They're so used to it being around, they're not going to find anything. But they do have a high ground ward of their own. So Queen of Pain <laughs> has that little advantage over them and the fact you can initiate the Tusk snowballing in. But he's looking at top, eyeing up mind control. He wants to get into his tranquil boots as quickly as he can, it looks like. 420 gold, trying to save up for boots, but in comes No Fear. With the Nightmare and Ice Shards will try and block him out. Mind Control taking a ton of damage. Here comes the Reactive TP. And they trap them both in the cogs. And Jirax might even die here as well. Mind Control gives up the life of his own teammate. Silent, zapped by the Thunderstrike. One more hit out from a neutral creep. We'll give the kill over to Disruptor. Interesting well, trade. Yeah, that was really unfortunate for them to port, uh, for Jirax to port him like that. And Mind Control, I, th I thought he... He thought he had the cogs, being able to push them back and save his teammate, but in the end, it actually put them both in a in a cage of death. Indeed, it did. Fata is very high up on this ramp. Resolution, top rune will be his. Four minutes in, Fata will collect the bounty rune down at bot, which is being held out by Kuroki, but Broodmother now has time. Spread her legs, get into this enemy jungle, get a couple of points back up into web. Actually going into the 1-2 build here. No point getting a couple of points in spawn spilings. You need the webs for the mobility. Just to hide yourself. The guise of invisibility. Get away from the gyro as much as you can. But once Flo starts to get into, you know, level 5, level 6, level 7, encroaches into the enemy jungle, stops this pulling and stacking from Jirax, the two Radiant supports, they're going to be starved, honestly. You know, Kuroki and Jirax, the Disruptor and AA, they need that level 6s. That's what they that's really aim for. Attack. There's no big key item they want. They don't want gold. Kills would be nice, but that's not what they're picked for. They're picked for their team fight capabilities, but if they don't get there fast enough, you have this massive weight on the back of mind control to land his hook shots. Mm -hmm. Well, to be fair though, um, I think I think the safe lane being uh, being played out by Liquid is actually quite well, even though they haven't netted the Brew Mother kill. I think Flo is just not giving them an opening, and it's it's actually one of those scenarios where I say both sides are playing the lane really well, like, and and they're just. There's really no openings for plays, specifically. No Fear has actually wandered himself down here. Maybe expecting the aggression from Liquid to come in. Mind Control forced back off his own Tier 1 tower. The Snowball will actually pick up Silent. And Mind Control's trapped inside that Ice Shards. The Cage of Death, not of his own making this time. And with the Blade Fury, Silent will sweep that one. Got a nice little kill on him. The Tier oh, 1 the tower. Oh, the Courier. Courier. Hey, up. <laughs> a little bit Man. close. That okay would be sad though. if it did go down. <laughs> the, the magic carpet dude is just gonna flap himself away. Yeah, barely surviving, regening up at 0 0.5 HP per second. And at bottom, the spiraling is going down, but again, no brood mother killed netted. Still on the soul ring, doesn't have much farm, only 7 CS, but still alive and still kicking. Yeah, very true, but resolution at mid is now at that point where he's got four in Scream and one in Sonic Wave. He's gone for the one Shadow Strike, so he hits this point at level seven instead of level eight, which, you know, maybe Fata doesn't expect. Sometimes it's hard to gauge if it's, le you know, obviously it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be something Fata will pr probably notice, the fact it's level one Shadow Strike and not level two, so you kind of expect that level four Scream to come and hit you. But still, it's that one big burst damage output that Queen of Pain can offer. Can come as a little bit of a surprise if you're not ready for it. So Fata, with the Haste Rune, should be okay to get himself out of sticky situations, but now you've got this full-on tri lane at bottom with Bane, Tusk, and Broodmother. Two heroes behind the Brood to try and save her from any aggression, but 
Liquid seem happy to just reset the lane and keep farming Gyro. And honestly, 46 last hits, free farming completely. Queen of Pain, pretty much even with him. The Juggernaut, even with Alina. There's not much between these two teams. You know, net worth wise, what are we actually looking at? Everyone is sitting pretty happily. Lena's the only one, you know, 600 net worth behind. Probably just yeah, down to. But uh, that'll close in time. She's been preparing herself some nice stacks, as you can see, and I think he's going to start clearing it up as his clarity is about to expire. Yeah, juicy stacks for her. Just a little bit of gold. We'll clear out mid lane at the same time. But it's been this really sort of smooth ebb and flow about the bottom lane. Liquid, they push into tower, they do damage to it, they bring the lane back, just reset, farm up a little bit more for Matumba Man. Uh, flow is now hitting level 5, but yeah, like you said, there's no opportunity. Top lane, mind control is dead. And Jirax, looking like he's going to get the kill back onto Weapon Y. The Tusk will be the trade. Not sure if it was worth it though. There's bot lane, they're trying to get this aggressive party going onto Matumba Man. But Silent has Omni Slash now. He's hit level seven and a half. Radiant and if anyone comes in and TPs behind this tier one, that's a that's a target. Painted yep. straight on their backs. Resolution. Speaking of targets, he's looking for one at bottom lane, but realizing again, it's the it's this ebb and flow. You know, it's the back and forth of this gyrocopter pushing, pulling, pushing, pulling. And now he's pulled it back to the tier one at exactly the same time that Resolution was looking to go and gank. Yeah. So uh, everything's kind of. It seems like on different parts of the map, Liquid are doing it. But uh, on the side of Empire, they still have their safe lane going for them. And anytime you run a Clockwork into a Juggernaut, you can only expect this kind of thing to happen. It's just, it's Clockwork relies on the Cogs as well as the Battery Assault threat to be able to survive. And Juggernaut, to an extent, ignores a lot of that. And he's actually picked up a Ring of Health. So he might be going for the Battle Fury option this game to just farm up and carry. And I think that's a really good plan because, again, the Juggernaut picked this game, it'll scale better. But Broodmother's on the chase here. Oh, a nice kinetic field, though. Very nice. Okay, okay. Here comes the gyro with the cooldown. Lands on top of the tusk. Doesn't slow through magic community anymore though. So Silent is getting himself a little bit further back with the vortex and the cold feet. Silent is dropping very quickly to Matumba Man. Uh, AA will get the kill. Good rotations in though. So now gyro level eight. Not only does he go up top, get a couple of kills, but he's got tower pressure to apply, farm to be had, and AA from that nearly reaches level six. Yeah, really, really good movement coming out of Liquid. And, you know, th these Clockwork kills, like, once you get two or three, it's it's really fine. So the fact that they dove so deep for this Clockwork kill, again, it, it's, it hurts them now. And Kuroki's kind of stuck, but the Resolution's TP was cancelled at mid. Um, but they're going to snowball. I guess that was Fata stunning him up. Snowball. It shouldn't connect here. It's just a little bit too far away. My man, though, he wants to go back in. The Shards will trap the Tusk in with the Gyro's Rocket Barrage. One final click out from the gyro will secure it, and Silent has actually moved himself up the top, but you know, the bottom lane, the Nightmare onto Mind Control have killed the Disruptor already. And Flo is on the hunt. He's looking for more. He's got the taste of blood, the clockwork blood. But Mind Control is a little bit too tanky. Seven armor even with those tranquil boots. A little bit mucky with the spirelings spewing onto them. This Ice Blast is big, even if they get that kill on Clockwork. A TP in here from Jirax. If only he can find a little more damage onto Resolution. Kinetic Field is there to try and block them out. Resolution, he's ticking over, but it's not going to be enough. He can blink away now. And with the Magic Stick Charges up, Vata comes in with a Laguna Blade and Dragon Slave Flow. Trying to escape, juking back and forth. LSA is not going to land onto the Broodmother. It's the Spiderlings, but Brood is out for now. And the Dust misses. Yeah, they won't be able to find him now. Even though they hit him with the spells, because of the dust, they're not going to be able to kill him. You know, if Kuro actually ults on top of himself, though, that would have been a play. Go for it, dude. You know he's here. Oh, man. Yeah, he, if, he didn't, if he had done it, it would have been a kill. But it's too late now, I think. It's Kuro. It's never too late. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. Maybe so. Uh, Broodmother will get herself away. and it's, it's Scout out Fata, so knowing that there's no one near the middle lane, weapon Y, getting a little bit aggressive, but... Matumba Man is sitting at level 9 with Phase Drum's Aqua. And this is something that we didn't, su uh, didn't see Silent do the other game. Silent went for the very greedy build in a couple of games we saw from him, where it was Phase, Aqua, Helm of the Dominator, then into the Asha. But Matu really does love this very stats heavy build up into SNY. I feel like he dislikes the BKB Rush build, and he does prefer to go for that Sanjin Yasha for the sort of well rounded build up just to get yourself a bit of farming speed, attack speed. But chasing power, I think, is what they really look at because Liquid, they love to engage, get the one-man pick-off, chase and chase and chase again. Disruptor, 
Very good pickup for them. Glimpse back, chase, clockwork, hookshot, rocket flare, vision. Everything that Liquid pick or have been picking over the past couple of months has been pick off and chase uh, potential, basically. But if you're the one being hunted and snowballed onto, the TP will come in from Jirax, but it's a little bit too late, I feel. The cooldown will not land, and Jirax is held in place with that Fiend's Grip. Another free kill out there. A tier 1 tower for Empire. Yeah, not enough responses in time. Even though Fada does have the Yule Scepter as well as the Haste in his bottle now, all he can do is really just uh, rebut the aggression by pushing in the mid lane, and he'll be able to do so, chipping away at the tower, but the tower at tier 1, the tier 1 tower at top already going down in Empire's favor. You know, that, uh, that drums build, it's something that a lot of people have done in the past, a lot of people have given up on. As you see, Matuma Man's picked it up this game. I think it was just a product of him, like, uh, hold that thought, Fada admit. Yule's up onto weapon Y. Top tower is under no further attack. push forward there onto the onto the Lina. Yeah, the gyro. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it looks like that's died down. Um, it, it just I have a qualm with dr uh, drums in general on carries. Like it's uh, the the item is not the same as before. It, it doesn't enhance the ability to carry. You know, the twenty five attack speed in the in the charge is actually really nice, but it's just. It's a 2k gold item and essentially a gold sink because it doesn't help you scale better. And I think this is one of those cases where like it might look nice on paper because he gets a lot of good stats and you can see his life points is over 1k HP. But it's just that easy at top. Like all it means is that they just have to spend uh, one more second hitting him or something to kill him. And uh, it also changes the mindset of your playstyle, right? Like with the drums, you want to chase, as you said, you want to chase down targets and you want to fight. But this game, he, he really needs to farm and get big to the point where he can 1v5 because Gyrocopter, essentially, you want to build for that. And he's already past that phase where Rocket Barrage is just going to run over heroes like night and day kind of thing. Um, even they're going to try to for 5-man smoke maybe? Even if you see the Juggernaut going to Battle Fury? Yeah, I think so. He should try to farm and scale with it. Okay. Like, I, I think that's the point. Uh, if you go drums and then Juggernaut goes Battle Fury and then you die once or twice with the drums, you're not going to be able to keep up in the farm at all. Yeah, there's no and fallback. that's when you just lose. Oh, Fata. He's found the Bane. Should be easy. Don't even need to throw the Laguna Blade. He thought about oh, Okay, they will. They will. Don't know exactly where the rest of Empire are coming in from. Okay, yeah, so they were I think that was fine. Save. The tier 1 tower admit, if they get it to it, it'd be good as well. But Resolution's got the uh, Illusions in, in position to die. Never mind. That didn't come through. That's a man, just a little bit too much damage there. Now, Silent has been left alone up at top, and Battle Fury is 360 gold away. Mind Control, we're yet to see a big hookshot in from him. He's, he's level 6. Getting closer to level 7, but Flo, he's really starting to you know, make a mark on this bottom lane. He's farming jungle. He's well on his way to an Orchid at this point. Even... Uh, Oh no! no. Was that wow. into the brood? Oh, they know he's there. It was. The yeah, yeah, yeah. They thought he would walk into the trees, and he just stood there. He didn't walk into trees at all. So that was a. I'm sure he was actually busy watching somewhere or microing somewhere else. But now Jax is going to come in probably with sentries. Yeah, they spotted him. Oh, well, disruptor! Run away from the spiderlings. Well, spiderling giving vision. Flo has been playing this lane exceptionally well, honestly. He's yeah. been running himself back and forth. This is, yeah, I, I think he's actually played this lane almost perfectly. Like, he's, he really understands the limits of his Broodmother, and I think that's what the hero really comes down to. A lot of Broodmothers in this situation, given the amount of resources that Liquid invested in the early stages, and even now, they would have fed a lot. And hold that thought, admit, silent, just getting, pardon me, resolution, bursting down with Tumba. Yeah, there you go, man. Good initiation, a lot of damage as well. Sonic Wave, Brain Sap, pure damage galore. Uh, back down to bot, the Spiderlings are chasing Jirax, but Kuroki is here. Kinetic Field will slow down the advance, but Flo is just pressuring, poking, prodding, making sure that there's no, no progression here from Liquid. They'd love yeah. to have Disruptor and AA farming on this lane. He's honestly creating so much pressure and presence, like it's, it's insane. Like There's always two heroes down at this lane, and the tower's not even down yet. So imagine when the tower goes down, how wary Liquid is going to have to be about their jungle. Empire, man, they're they're taking over this game pretty well, and Kuro's decided to abandon the lane, just uh, spam it out with rockets and A blast possibly, but the tower's gonna go down, nothing to stop it, and Silence already completed his battle fury at 16 minutes into the game, so he's gonna start farming even faster now. There we go, there we go. And look at the supports as well. The Tusk, sitting at Arcane Boots, 1300 gold, can start thinking about a Glimmer Cape. Kuroki, aggressive warding mission. But he was spotted going in, middle lane, mind control is caught, Cogs traps the two opponents in with him. A cage of his own design, 
encased in frost and ice from the ice shards. And Jirax is playing this funky little role again, hiding in the trees, waiting for the TP to come in faster than glimpse them back, but it's not coming. Oh man, Resolution went for the first item BKB. Oh, wow. A wise choice. Yeah. Against Static Storm, you know, you can't blame him. Yeah, against the Lina Yules as well. Like, there's no damage on him as long as he has the BKB until Lina has Agnims. Right. Ice Blaster trying to turn the push, but there's no real commitment here. Look at this. This Bermuda Triangle of aggressive dire wards here. Top laning ward, top rune spot ward, and aggressive deep ward behind the tier 1 here, between tier 1 and tier 2 mid. Looking for TPs, looking for any kind of counter initiation. Mind control throws out the rocket flare and Empire no. Okay, we've done our job here, we can go back to farming. Unless mm -hmm. Mind control throws a hook shot. No, he's not going to catch them just there. Silent was TPing out in a relatively precarious position, but Flo, look at this little broodmother, honestly. From lane to jungle, back to lane again. There's just no stopping her, and there's no way to farm your own jungle here. Yeah, it's just giving so much vision and being a nuisance in general. He's playing this really well, and you know what? You mentioned mind control as uh, as Empire was retreating from that tier one tower push at mid. Again, he he just can't hook. This is one of the reasons why Clockwork stopped getting first picked every game. It's like uh, if the Clockwork gets picked, you just pick carries or cores in general that can survive the hook or just get away. And both Juggernaut and Quap fit that description, fit that criteria. Like you, you just can't hook on these guys and land a solo kill. Especially when you don't have any good itemization. You know, you've got Tranquil Boots and a Bracer. You don't have a Blade Mail, no Force Staff, anything like that. He was shut down heavily in the lane. They roamed on him pretty relentlessly with a Tusk and Juggernaut just time after time. <laughs> and Matumban has resorted to farming Ancients at this point because Flo has created this barrier between mid lane and jungle. And speaking about Silence Radiant Farm Rate. He's about to breach 9,000 net worth. 18 minutes, 19 minutes in. Yasha will be done in a second. And that's only going to increase his farm speed. They're stacking up Ancients, which the Juggernaut can just go and clear through in a couple of seconds with the hits and crits he can have. But uh, what do you think? Battle Fury into uh, like S and Y? I, I don't know about Manta here. We've seen a lot of Manta Juggernauts recently. But what do you progress into after that? I'm a I'm a fan of Manta personally because ever since the recent Manta buffs this patch, like you can spam it like crazy. It's like 30 second cooldown and very cheap mana cost. And with Battle Fury, you want to utilize the mana spam. But hold that thought, he might go down here. Oh, yeah, he's dead. The timing, the <laughs> debut of the Shadow Blade from Fata, perfect. Yeah. LSA really nice pickup. To Laguna Blade, and what did that give him? 737 gold, 1300 experience, which is a pretty big deal. That puts him within 1600 XP range of level 16. Yeah, it, it makes him the by far the highest level hero in the game. That was a really, really nice pick off, but he has to be careful here. He might die. Snowball into Fiend's grip. Oh, he's too oh, fast. He doesn't pick up the Bane. And Fata has the Shadow Blade. There's no reveal. Matamu Man comes in with the drums to speed up the Lina. LSA will land and allow her dance. Always on a fly. Weapon Y. I always get those two names mixed up. No fear. Turns back on the brain sap. Looks like the Bane he drops right after as well. So Fata comes out of that with three kills in a row. Quick succession. A rapid fire round from the Lina. Yeah, he's doing some lifting on his hero for sure right now. Now they're going to be able to push or at least pressure top tower. But in the meantime, I think Resolution is getting a solo kill. I'm about to see it towards the mid. When the BKB popped, he'll pop out the AA. The Shadow Strike and a few right clicks in, and again, there's no way of chasing him down. There's no catch. Maybe a hook shot here would, you know, hold him in place for a little while. I figure, I figure he would have actually just popped the Sonic Wave for him instead of expanding the BKB, because despite the cooldowns on the BKB versus the Sonic Wave, the ultimate's definitely more dispensable. But uh, he he held on to it, and the BKB will be up as soon as the the cooldowns up, of course, and then Sonic Wave will be up as well. So they'll have both those tools available within the minute. What's Broodmother been up to? Orchid is pretty much ready if you want to change out that Ring of Basilius for the Sage's Mask and then bring out the rest of the recipe. Rest of the components out to yourself. And Fata, okay. Soul Booster. Uh, this could be a Bloodstone. We've seen him really like the Bloodstone in the Lena recently. It gives you a, a bit more scaling with the charges you get to build up. It gives you a lot more teamfight presence, tanks you up a hell of a lot as well. Octarine Core is, is kind of okay on the Lina, but I feel that you need other items before Octarine to make it worth it, you know, like a Hex or an Aghanim Scepter, something like that, just to, just to make it a little bit more worthwhile. But what, what do you reckon? 
Um, uh, traditionally, I would have said the Bloodstone as well. And in the last patch, it would have been for sure. But with the Bloodstone nerf this patch, and I guess the better understanding of Octarine in general, uh, I feel like it, it will be an Octarine. I think the Octarine is uh, it's a greedy playstyle. And as you said, it's more effective the more active items or more spammable items you have with Sheep Six and whatnot. But he has Yules and he has Shadow Blade. And it's, it's honestly, it's enough. Because Lina's already got pretty short cooldowns, and you just want to spam them even further. I guess so. They're aiming for Matuma Man up at the top lane, but look at this. The army waiting in the oh, wings. Oh, Fata. Down at bot, Fata runs straight past Resolution. The sentry is there, but they're not going to catch him. And it looks like Empire have caught on to what's happening over to the east. There's, oh, they saw them! They saw them go in! Matuma Man in with the Static Storm and the, the Tusk. The poor little Tusk. They won't find the uh, the oh my goodness, the Juggernaut. Yeah. And he gets himself away and back into the jungle. But still, yeah, Al Aloha's death there is okay. You know, it's, he's close to his mech, so that's kind of that kind of sucks for him. But he forced out a ridiculous amount of ultimates, as well as the presence of multiple heroes, and that gives Empire the intel that they need. And Resolution needs to be careful. Where is he heading off to? Silent runs to mid. Resolution regens up. No fear. Still has that fiend's grip available. But Silent is alone in the jungle right here. He, he is heading into that Manta style. Yasha ultimate orb mid. Spam out. Resolution dropping a little low. But the five-man group up here from Team Liquid. The mech is nearly done out on that oh, ancient apparition. <laughs> yeah, that glimpse. Was that a BKB Took bait? about 50 range away. Trying to bait the BKB may uh, maybe. Mm. Uh, it's Gyro Manta, not SNY. Orchid from mm. Brood, I guess. Get yourself out of that. More targets for Omni Slash. Well, the thing is, I think he wants BKB at some point regardless. I mean, there's a lot of bi BKB bypassing spells for sure between Omni, Sonic Wave, and of course the Fiend's Group coming out of the main. But he wants to withstand the magic damage. I, I, don't, I don't know what, the, what Manta does, him, does for him this game. I, I can understand the Omni Slash, but when they fight, he's not going to be the one that's tanking all the damage. And even then, Manta's not going to save you. Smoke so into smoke. Well, Silent might be dead though. Oh, the hook shots there. LSA through the spin, but the sonic wave across four. Static storm onto nobody as the ice bars will land and connect onto three. Maybe just the two as Silent does juke over to the side now. The rest of Liquid, they're running out of HP, running out of life, and they've got no cooldowns left. My control slashed down by Silence Omni. And the Tumor Man brains out, but Smooth Pain still has a way to get back into this fight with a blink BKB. Illusions up as well. Nothing to stun Matuma Man, but Resolution! He takes the Laguna Blade before he PKBs. The Fiend's Grip will be there on the Fata, but it's all too late. Fata dies, but at the trade-off for the Queen of Pain. Now, Kuroki, how fast is your TP? 58 seconds until he can actually get himself out of here. So it looks like uh, you accept the inevitable. He can, he can buy mech. He had a thousand gold. He could have bought the mech up if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. I guess he didn't recognize that. Maybe he was thinking of... Uh, Waiting for the cooldown on the Ice Blast because it was just a moment away from coming back up and he might have been able to snipe the Tusk, but Empire is not going to give him the light of day for that to happen. And in the meantime, Flo still Radiant applying a lot of pressure at bottom. Oh yeah, keep a, forgetting this guy. There's a Brood Mother in the game, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so two or three minutes ago, he finishes off his Orchid. Good deny from Mind Control. Clockwork takes out the Tier 2. There's nothing really to push him back either. Oh, he goes back in. The Manta style tries to get Silent out, but mind control, you don't have the HP or armor to deal with the hits and crits out from this Manta Battle Fury Juggernaut. Maybe, maybe Fata can land this. LSA does connect. Laguna Blade will hit as well, oh, and Silent is dead. Oh, the healing that was, ward. Yeah, he's, he actually managed to drop the healing ward. I'm surprised about that, but you know, Fata's actually gone for the Bloodstone as well. So he's going to have all the mana he wants to be able to spam out his spells. Yeah. He, he does like the item on the Lina. We've even seen him go for the Bloodstone Rush. With, like, b even without getting Yules, no Shadow Blade, no Aghanims, just go uh, yeah. Treads Bloodstone. He, he does like it quite a bit. Yeah, it's, it's probably okay with Treads, actually. But uh, this is a, it's a very, like, hero assassin sniping build. And, uh, I mean, Bloodstone will always complement uh, an Intel hero. Four members of Empire in this Radiant Jungle. Now, Roshan is something that we haven't looked at or talked about. But it's getting to that point. 25, 30 minutes in, you look at both of these teams and you think, well, Liquid, yeah, it's not really a great Roche taking lineup. They've got no medallions, no real minus armor, and it's down to Gyrocopter trying to, you know, lifesteal away if he had a Helm of the Dominator or a Morbid Mask. Empire, though, Healing Ward, they've got Sustain, they've got Damage. They've got a good way of taking it out with a Sigil as well, up to level 2. Definitely the capability to finish off Roshan, but 
they can't go in there without winning a team fight. You know, both of these teams kind of have to have this this scrappy brawl before they can go and think about taking the big man in this cave, or they smoke Silent Plus One into the Roche Pit alone. You know, they they take the tusk and uh, and the Juggernaut in there, maybe with a sigil, and try and sneak it. So once they have the Aegis up on that Juggernaut, or even the Queen of Pain, they become absolute monsters. If you can't kill them once, <laughs> it's going to be even more difficult to kill them twice, and it looks like Liquid are going to try and smoke themselves up. And Empire, they are controlling this Roche Pit area, and they're going to go in for this. But Liquid have gone oh, the wrong way. Oh, and Liquid's going to the polar opposite side of the map, and they're porting in their last hero into this to try and bait Fado. This is just the result of not having any wards up, I guess. Just having no vision, you have to just pick and choose a side. And now they're realizing that the Roshan's happening, but they're yeah. way too far on the map. Even with the AA Ice Blast coming in, can they stop this? I really thought that Empire would need a team oh, fight. Oh, it's a five-man blast, though. This is, this is the perfect opportunity for Empire to actually go and take this Roche Pit. Or oh, this Roshan. He's down to 1200 HP. They're going to actually finish him off before Liquid get in here. The hook shot is ready. Mind Control has entered the pit. Roshan's not dead yet. They'll get the Juggernaut taking it, but it was killed off by the Radiant. Now the fight continues. Omni Slash back from Fata to Matu and back onto the Gyro again. But even with all that damage, they can't kill off Silent just yet. He's got the Aegis. He'll pop himself back to life. And Liquid have lost three. The Juggernaut respawns. Resolution still on the hunt. And with Kuroki dropping, Liquid. One hero remains. It's Fata's Lina. But he cannot 1v4. You know, um, that was really, really close. Like, what Silent did is he started getting bashed up and saw his life points dropping due to the AA LT and all these things. So he started spinning. So he doesn't take any more bash extra magical damage coming out of Roshan. And that, that actually allowed him to dodge what Mind Control threw at him. Because if Mind Control jumped in while Silent was still killing Roche, and Roche died as Mind Control jumped in, he would have snatched the Aegis as well by using the cogs, but Mind Control died just before Roshan died because Silent lost DPS while he was spinning. And uh, I don't think he planned it that way, but it just worked out so perfectly in Empire's favor because of this. The, the trade-off though is that the, the Roche kill does go to, the, go to the side of Liquid. It, it is an instant loss. Oh, goodness. There you go. Does yeah, die. Nice snipe by Fada. It's the instant loss of the Aegis as well, because with that, Silent maybe could have looked to push up onto high ground. The Axe, yeah. BKB Klopp, the Juggernaut, who maybe would have had BKB at the end of that fight himself. In fact, he's going to have it very soon. Yeah, Double and magic. a very unorthodox build, I would say, coming out of Silent. Very, very rarely do you ever see Manta and a BKB being built by a Juggernaut. Super defensive. And after a farming build, you know, you're farming, you're farming, and then you go back into these defensive items to keep yourself alive. It's, it's fed him well. 8, 5, yeah. and 6. Put himself in a bunch of these team fights. Resolution 7, 2, and 6 right now. What are we looking at overall? Because there's currently a, a 4,000 and uh, 5,000 XP net worth lead for Empire, but it's, it's not massive. It's not massive at all. And again, going back to what we were saying in game number 2, this Broodmother, okay, she's got close to 9,000 net worth, but what does she offer you? in team fights in the game overall is actually mind control. He pulls himself away. They killed off No Fear. The Bane Elemental does get ripped apart, but mind control escaping there after using a hookshot very deep in. But yeah, what what does the Broodmother give you in team fights? Now you're going into a BKB can be a battle brood, but it just feels like your net worth is inflated by this hero. Yeah, he's been he's been playing so safe and so passively that I feel like um I mean to an extent he couldn't really do that much more. But I guess this is just the limits of the hero, right? At the end of the day, if you don't stomp your lane or just go absolutely crazy, there are ways to deal with him. Because he's always isolated from the team most of the time. And that just allows for easy picks to happen. Especially when you got Fada with a Shadow Blade just sniping targets left and right. It's like the perfect assassin for this kind of scenario. Oh, Silent. And Silent, he might get exploited as well. Uh, they're waiting for the Ice Blast to come in. The Rocket Flare will try and give vision. Fata, do you still go for this? It looks like you do with the Dragon Slave Laguna Blade. The hits are in, but Omni Slash is ready. The silence is there. Fata, he's got the Yule Scepter to try and escape, but over on the backside, Jirax holds Flow in place with the gem they've got. They'll get the Broodmother instead. They at least get a kill for their efforts. And Fata is now at, what, 11 Bloodstone charges? Yeah, he's, he's, really, he's really putting in the work in this game. It's 10, 1, and 0. So not exactly a team player when it comes to assisting, but you know he's getting all the kills that he's going for and really clearing up the map for his team. And as a result, Matuma Man was just at top farming the enemy woods because he realizes that Fada's forcing heroes on him. 
And in the meantime, Silent gets a kill on Kuroki. It looks like a simple Alni slash kill with the Broom of their Spiderlings giving vision. And uh, Silent has to be careful here. He spins. Now, Bane kills Gyro, but I want to watch this because there's a hook shot maybe coming in from Mind Control. He's being blocked by Spiderlings over and over, and he can't find the line. So Gyro gets dropped. Who was there? Everyone. Everyone was there. Queen of Pain, Tusk, and the Bane. And look at this. The glimpse back. Silent is sent a little bit further away. It's Jirax in the clock. Yeah, TP the heck out of there. Actually, Fata with the BOTs. Aghanim Scepter was purchased up, and that's going to be on the way now, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got this Ag's Bloodstone, BOT, Shadowblade, Yule Scepter, Lena. One yeah. item slot to fill. What's it going to be? Refresher? Uh, could be a refresher. Could be a sheep as well. I mean, he can go many options. Shiva's is good too. Octarine Core, like anything that just helps him keep doing what he's doing right now is just fine. He has enough survivability this game with the Yule Scepter. And the fact that he's the natural predator. So a lot of heroes are just going to be wary unless they're specifically hunting him down. But they can't really do that without the gem right now. Um, and Resolution has, does have the gem, but at the end of the day, that's still just one hero with True Sight. So they really need to be able to camp locations and just predict where Fada's going to go. That's really hard. Kuroki. Num num num. Lots of gold. He ice blasted the Ancients where Broodmother was farming with Spiderlings and he got himself a, a nice chunk of change. Uh, Tusk Guardian Greaves. Put that heal and sustain to keep them going. But resolution, where's he heading with this? Ultimate Orb he's had for quite a while now. I'm guessing Hex. Lincoln Sphere would be... It would be okay here, but with the BKB going double defensive items is, is a little bit overkill. What do you reckon? Do we go into the Scardi DPS build for resolution, or has Juggernaut already got enough? I think uh, I think this will most likely be a Hex. Aghanim's Hex BKB is a pretty standard inventory, and it allows you to go into Shiva's or, or uh, Refresher right after as well. So it depends on how long they want to take this game, but I think they need the, the catch slash pickoff potential. Otherwise, he can't really utilize this gem that he has right now. My control has found no fear. Found him for Fanta just to Laguna play him into oblivion. Korea delivering the bash of the silent with Tumble Man. Omni Slash is here. Back onto the creep wave, but Matu's been held up with the snowball for what Ice Blast. Oh, the Static Storm's good as well. They keep them trapped in place, but silent diving deep. BKB ready. Matu slice, dies, Fanta bash, and Resolution blinks forward. Have killed Kuroki's AA, but silent is not able to survive through the damage. He dived in that little bit too deep and take a look at this. Lalina hunting. Resolution has no mana for the blink, but he chose the wrong direction. They've got no vision of this, and Resolution knows where Lina went. They know the Shadow Blade's gone. He's calm, he's happy, he's fine. To get the haste and run away. Wow. I was so busy watching Silent that whole fight that I have no idea what happened to Aloha Dance at the back lines. Because if they just had one more player, that was like that was like four kills ready to happen. Every player on Liquid was so low and they got away. But uh, I think Resolution blinked in and missed his spell at the end there, I think, as well, um, which is kind of unfortunate. But also, I, I don't know why Silent didn't drop a healing ward when he was fighting with the BKB. I feel like I feel like that would have made a difference. I'm not sure. I mean, he got hit by the Ice Blast initially, but now Flo is trapped in Kinetic Field and Cogs. Turns on the Lifesteal, but against the Blade Mail, he doesn't do a damn thing. The Ice Blast is good from Liquid as well. Kuroki on the money with that. But it was... Uh, we can have a fight here. Yeah, it, it was a case of the Snowball Sonic Wave. Like, everyone piled in onto Gyro here, just behind the Tier 2. And there's just this mass, like, everyone from Liquid, uh, everyone from Empire, en masse onto that one target while, while silent. They went with the Chase and Omni Slash. The rest of them kind of milled around. They didn't commit like Silent did. So I, d I don't know if yeah. they had a little bit of miscommunication, if they didn't want to really dive in that far, because it, it was deep. It was yeah, it was, deep. it was most certainly very deep. They still haven't taken the Tier 2 either, so it goes to show how far he was. But given the scenario, I mean, I don't blame him. I think he saw the kills and kind of went for it. And he landed some really lucky bashes that forced out a Yules on the Lina as well. And I, I thought with a Healing Ward they would have done it, but uh, I guess I, I don't know how long the AA Blast la lasted. But I can't imagine it lasted the entire duration of his death. Because he, he didn't take out or anything. He actually just got yeah. bursted down. Yeah, at, at the end, he, he could have put Healing Ward down, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like it would have made a huge difference. Because, again, he, he, he landed some really lucky bashes. Jurax has himself a Perseverance. A oh, the here. Queen of Pain's oh, going in. The Hex is there on the BKB to stop the glimpse. Kuroki will be saved a little bit by the mech and mind control. Hook shots in and resolution. He's trapped in the oh, Static Storm. They've dived in way too deep for a kill on an AA. And on top of all of that, they lose the gem. 
There's no buyback for Resolution and that Queen of Pain. The thought process behind Silent Diving Med, Resolution Diving Bot Lane. Oh, it's, it's happening, man. The CIS thought is happening. The, the 322s are here. <laughs> the, the, the game is in their hands. They've got... They... Yeah, they're, I mean, well, Russians, it was. Empire in general, they're a very aggressive team. And uh, obviously that trade at bottom wasn't worth it. I kind of do wonder what the process is with the, with the communication, because I thought Aloha and uh, as well as No Fear could follow up to an extent. But they don't actually have the items that could save resolution either with glimmer capes or four stabs or anything like that. So he just really got greedy with that kill. And his BKB charge ran out just in time for yeah. Jirax to be able to silence him up. And I was saying that Empire had the lead and they, they did until the dive mid. And now that mm -hmm. kill on resolution is going to swing it even further in Liquid's favor. XP yeah. is going up to about three, 4,000 lead for Liquid. And we've just gone over the zero mark now heading up to a 2.5 key for Liquid. Uh, 2.5k lead for Liquid. You look at it. Kuroki, 1800 gold in the bank. I'm, yeah, the question I had with Perseverance on Disruptor. Lotus Orb here could be okay, I guess. You, uh, you dispel Fiend's Grip. You can bounce back Fiend's Grip, bounce back Omni Slash. I, I, I guess it's better now I s say these things out loud than it sort of felt in my head. I was, I was just wondering how, uh, how optimal it would be. Lotus is really good against uh, sheep sticks in general because oh, yeah. you can remove it as soon as it's cast. And since they realize that Resolution has the sheep stick, it's probably the best thing you can get. Aside right. from a force, I think force tap would actually be better because it's cheaper and the buildup is much better as well. But uh, if you can get the Lotus Orb, all the more power to him. In this situation, Liquid completely caught off guard. They're a train of heroes and the bandits are here. The caravan has been raided one by one. The two supports are gone. But the positioning there from Liquid was a little bit awkward. Fafta will TP up the top looking for Aloha Dance here. Probably will find him. LSA should be able to land it as long as he can get the trajectory right. Oh just my about. gosh. Nearly. He almost juked that. Nearly. Wow. Well, yeah, Liquid with one hero here, one hero here, one hero here. It was just so simple for Empire just to swarm through the jungle and find pick off by pick off. But they yeah. will be alive in 10 seconds. They'll have their ulties. They'll be ready and to fight once out more. As well. So yeah, both both teams are scouting out with the Clockwork Rocket on the side of Liquid and Broodmother Spiderling scouting out Roche. So that's probably the next play. Liquid, as soon as Kroki's up, I imagine they're gonna smoke. We're going in for this Empire. This is risky. This is a risky move. The Rocket Flare. Yep, they see everything. Time to back up, Empire. Can't commit to this because look at middle lane, Fata. He was split pushing top, now he's split pushing mid. He has to be a little bit wary about what's going on. There's no gem. Oh, there is actually. Sorry, Resolution picks the gem back up off Jirax, it looks like. He has another one in his stash, so he's fine with that. Yeah, Fada, Fada actually made a pretty cool play here. He just recognized that they're going to try to rush. So since they have vision, they don't need to go for it right away. Just push in the mid lane and force the enemy heroes back. And he actually got out as well because the... I don't know if the Queen of Pain actually had a port. I feel like if she did, she definitely should have ported for that kill. Because that's a really big kill on Fada right now, but... Um, regardless, he still gets out scot free, and that's the most important thing. Because now Roshan positioning is in favor of Liquid. And Gyro has just picked up a Satanic, fully done. There's a DD rune down at this bot spot. I think Kuroki should look to deny it, unless they want to get Matoma Man in onto the. Oh god, no! No, 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 no! BKB up, call down, lands. The Ice Path is on top of two of them. And with Mind Control running in, Matoma Man takes a chunk of damage here. But the fact that Mind Control is here blocking him out with cogs, Matu Hex tries to run, but they've got Silent ripping through him. He's got his, uh, he's got his Omni Slash as well, if he wants to. Oh, he just used it. He's taking them all down. Gyro Clockwork, both dead. No fear on the back, actually. Nightmares, Fata. Well, Laguna Blade is at the ready, but Silent has cleared up house. Clockwork buying back. Fata's trying to battle this out. 1v3, and maybe he can actually do it. Silent! He gets the Abyssal, but it's too late. Fata? I is it over? It's, yeah, it is. Looks like it is. I thought I thought Resolution might have died as well, uh, but Fata didn't have his Yules. As I say that, he actually is... He's, did he sell his Yules, or did he just put it in his stash? Because it looks like he sold it for the BKB. Looks like it, yeah. Yeah, and of course that meant Resolution couldn't hex him up in that time. So that was really big. Now they're going to get Roche out of it, then I imagine they're going to give it to perhaps Mind Control, unless Fada wants to drop his BKB for the time being to pick it up. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I I guess Mind Control... No, Fata's going for this. Look look at his position to Twitch yeah. moving forward. The stutter step might, 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 might. The freaking Seagulls. Oh, not stunning the Roche, huh? What's he doing? What's he up to? What, what are you dropping? 
What are you waiting for? Ages. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. So it's mind control. Yeah. He'll take it. Um. You know, that fight, Mind Control made a huge play that was really hard to notice. He hooked in, and then he cogged and isolated the Juggernaut. And for four seconds, I think, literally four seconds, Silent didn't realize what was going on with his hero, because the, the fight was way too chaotic. But he was actually stuck inside the cogs during his BKB duration. If he was able to right-click, he would have cleaved down the heroes on the side of Liquid as well, behind the Gyrocopter, and they would have won that fight, possibly like in a 4-1, 4-0 scenario. But as it stands, you know, that, that play alone, it saved their team fight. Yeah, I could barely click on him. I was like, come on, let, let me click on the Juggernaut. I just want to see if his only slash is off cooldown, but Fata has been oh, caught with a Fata. hex. The gem is here. They've got vision. They know he's here. And it looks like he'll BKB with a Fiend's Grip holding him in place. The damage output is not quite there. And Fata could turn and kill them off. Ice Blast is on top of resolution. Fata turns to take down Weapon Y, but it's not quite enough. So Matuma Man has to try and secure this. He's slowed by the Broodmother and... Tusk will actually make his way out. The retreat is good. And Matuma Man, BKB on cooldown. Manta's ready in three, four seconds time, but he's already hexed up and Omni-Slash. He's trying to heal up, but it's not enough. They lose their two big key heroes, and with Gyro having no buyback for 80 seconds, Liquid could be in a little bit of bother. Tusk not even dying with the Greaves. Healing, dispelling, keeping himself fresh and healthy. That was, that was a little bit messy from Liquid. Yeah, it goes to show though, during BKB, they really have no damage besides the, besides the Juggernaut. Even with uh, the Broodmother coming in, it's it's not enough. The Brood doesn't have enough items to fight, even with the nice ultimate. So, this game, it's uh, it's very tricky at this point. It, it's gotten to that late game stage where both drafts, because they were so... Even how they played out in the early game, the anybody's game right now so far. Whoever gets the jump is just gonna win. But I still give the edge to Empire because they have this Juggernaut that's been farming. That's very far ahead of the, gy the Gyrocopter, per se. And even though Fada's got all his items, um, he doesn't have a Sheep Stick. So his instant disable factor is not there. And uh, if he gets in a caught in a bad position like that, there's really no saving him, I think. So right now is the time that I'd really like to start looking at things like buybacks and start talking about sort of defender's advantage and things like that. Next Roshan mm -hmm. is going to be relatively important. You know, the one, uh, the one after this one, but... The fact that Liquid right now, they don't have a great pushing lineup. They rely very heavily, again, you know, I keep coming back to this, but they need that one big pick-off. They need to get the numbers advantage from the get-go, find a target, kill them, and then just try and, you know, run rampant through the rest of Empire. Because if you kill the Juggernaut, if you kill the Queen of Pain, sure, if they buy back, they'll get back into the team fight. With the, uh, yeah. with the sustain from the mech and things like that, you've got from the AA, the fact that you can just keep everyone controlled with Static Storm, the BKB is on Empire. What are, what are we at now? Five seconds Quop, Juggernaut. Eight seconds, actually. So he's not run through his. That's pretty important against things like Static Storm, especially. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not too sure, but I think he's going for a Scotty as well with that ultimate orb. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just wants to give himself more stats and buff himself up. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the ideal item this game. It's just one of those items that you really can't go wrong with. I, I figure uh, he might want the chase ability with the face boots and butterfly flutter effect, possibly. Because it's going to be a long way before the gyrocopter gets an MKB as well. And as you can see, he's got a talisman, so he might be going for butterfly himself. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know about the Scotty. I think it, another item that just looks really good on paper at this stage in the game. That I'm not too sure about the impacts of. Yeah, Lotus fact, Orb. Yeah, it's finished up now by Jirax. And there's the refresher. Okay, here we go. Double Hex, double BKB, and double Sonic Wave. Mm -hmm. Resolution. He has the Mana Pool for it as well, so this is nice. He's got the Arsenal at his disposal. So many weapons to throw down onto Team Liquid. And are both teams going to smoke into each other? It looks like Liquid are prepping themselves. Smoke up, movement speed buff out from Fanta. They're not going to go for it just yet. Maybe baiting out the Lina at the middle line. Get them to go in onto Fanta's Lina. Just they're thinking about it. Illusions are out from the Juggernaut. Empire, they reposition back into their own jungle. Just continue going. Oh, oh, that's a. What did he sell for that then? Shadowblade. Shadowblade's gone. Yeah, I guess he's uh, he's realized at this point he's not getting any more solo snipes. It's going to be a five v five game, and whoever uses the spells better and faster is going to win. Take the outcome. Here's the hunt and silent. He's got a demon edge. What did he do with the ultimate orb? He might have just sold it. So this is a nice choice. He's oh, going for the MKB now. Here's the fight. Second chain of stuns. They've got it. There's no BKB. He's dropped. He's got no buyback. Even with the refresher up, they'll find no fear here as well. But the battery assault. Oh, no. And Empire, they're crumbling from the back to front.
Flo and Silent, there's no TP on the Juggernaut. They know. They know there's no TP on the Juggernaut, but there's nothing really that Liquid can do about this. There's no objectives to take. There's no way they can hard push into a lane. They just know that Silent will move to the side shop. Wait a second, where's the... Did Brood take the Demon Edge? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. He, nice. Silent needed a TP for this because he's going to split push. He's saying that uh, we cannot fight into that right now without resolution, so he's just going to do his best. As I say that, he's actually putting back. Um, I guess they're going to go in for a last-ditch effort or something because I don't see them holding this Raxus 3v5. There is no buy buck in Queen of Pain. Like, yeah. no, nowhere near. She needs 1,350 gold. So it's not like they're waiting for five gold to come in. Glyph is gone. Rax are falling. And Team Empire, they had this game in the palm of their hands and they just slipped away through their fingers. Fata on this. Lena has been an absolute wrecking ball coming through Team Empire here. They'll take the first lane of Rax 47, min uh, 47 and a half minutes in and they're looking for a second lane. They've got 13 seconds here to take a tier three. Can, can they take maybe ranged Rax? Empire are going to start in three, four seconds. They're going to with the Enfeeble, slow down Fanta's attack damage a little bit, and here we go, Walrus Punch first up, but BKB Lotus Orb turns it back around a little bit, Silent, he's being shredded with the Abyssal Blade back on the Fanta, Snowball in up to the Static Storm, with a BKB it doesn't do enough, and Matu is trapped in. And the bat is out from Silent, there are very low HP heroes, and Mind Control trying to do his best on the front lines to deal with them. The resolution has rejoined, we'll be able to actually wipe Liquid, how did Lina die on the back? I think uh, I think Resolution was able to chase her down as she was on the retreat, but she took a lot of damage hitting that tower in the first place because that's the first target that Empire went on. That was really greedy of them. Um, as you were questioning even, like, if they can take the racks here, and the answer is a definitive no because with the Tusk Shards being able to isolate targets that are on the high ground, you can only expect this kind of fight to happen, especially when they have the vision advantage they do on the defense. Do so there's going to be buybacks one by one, I presume, um, as soon as they reach the base anyway because this Gyrocopter won't be able to get up in time. And actually, you know what? I'm thinking about it now. Fada will respawn in time to deal with the creep wave. Thanks to Bloodstone. So I'm not sure how many buybacks. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Bloodstone. AA maybe has to buy back here. It's getting close. It's getting very, very tight. And the cogs have already been thrown out a little bit too early for mind control. So mid racks for mid racks is a possibility here. <laughs> As Team Empire, they're the ones on the aggressive now. Gyrocopter. Time to buy back. They've got the AA alive. Ice Blast can fly, but Resolution's already jumped in. There's the Snowball. Actually counted out. The Lotus Orb will prop him up, and Fata's in the thick of things. Mind Control has the cogs actually separating the fight up, and Fata, he's being hit and crit and bashed and stunned and dead. He's gone and has buyback. He'll come back into the fight as quickly as he possibly can, but Flo, he's trapped, he's stunned, he's frozen in the enemy base, and they still haven't taken Rax. Matuma Man comes back in with a cooldown. With a Fiend's Grip, the Snowball bounced back and forth. The Lotus Orb is working here. Somehow, Matuma Man snowballs in. An Empire have lost three. There's a buyback on the Juggernaut and the Tusk, though. Yeah, and Flo is still sitting inside the base. They have no detection for him. These Lotus Orbs, honestly, man. Yeah. It's a good item. If or you can get it. Th this one Lotus Orb, right? It's, it's just the one in Jirax bouncing back spell after spell. It also, like, the nice thing is when you load a sword of the target too, Silent, he can't Omni Slash at all. Because when he does, yeah. the target that he Omni Slashes will Omni Slash as well. And uh, that really just completely negates the ability and the effects of what he wants to do with it. So Flo's going to cut the creep wave here, which is nicely done. But the advantage still stands that Liquid, they took the racks, they got a lot of kills in return, even after getting 5-man wiped. And they did expend the buyback to do so, but they're still ahead. And Roshan's taking some time to spawn. It's going to be another two minutes, of course. They're not aware of this, but it could be that both teams are not going to be patient enough to just wait for it lying around and possibly just smoke into each other beforehand. But here's the situation I was sort of trying to point at, sort of 40 minutes in. The defender's advantage and buyback availability. The Team Liquids, they expended three buybacks there. AA, Clockwork, and Lena. Team Empire still have buybacks on their three cores, but not their two supports. Juggernaut with Omni Slash available. Could have bought back there if Liquid did try and pressure too deep in. But the fact that Liquid now, you know, BKBs are running low, no buybacks. They they need Aegis and Cheese to win this game, I feel. At least yeah. in the next 10 minutes or so. I think both teams are really looking to that Roche. Uh, it's probably the most important thing coming up for sure. And it's going to decide who's going to close out the game, really. And this is do or die for Empire. They need to win. 
this game to continue in the series. Team Liquid, they need to win to actually take the series. Here it is, yeah. Yeah. I think I think they realize it too. Like taking the fight when Roche spawns is too late. So they just it's not a matter of impatience as I said earlier, but it's more of a more dominant move. This is this is the right call, I think, to get vision and secure your positioning more than anything else. Mind control. Do you know what's coming around the corner for you? You do not hook shot. Oh, maybe you do. Catches three in the cogs. Flow gets pushed back, but over on the other side, Matulman, Man, they've got Laguna Blade onto Resolution. Not enough to finish him off, and Juggernaut kills Mind Control in the cogs with the Omni Slash here. Abyssal Blade up, and Fata's being focused down. The Static Storm will hold Sun in, but not until it gets his BKB out, and Liquid. They've lost two big heroes, and it looks like they might just lose everyone with no buybacks on your Gyro or your Lina. Empire look like uh, they're going to be striding their way to a Game 4 victory here. Matuma Man trapped in the shards. And Gyro does have buyback up and running again, but ultra kill for Silent. And look who's back, the daddy. Big Roshan in his cave with Aegis and Cheese. Yeah, the Grand Vizier himself now going to drop not only the Aegis, but the Cheese as well. And they'll probably be able to follow up with a push. As you see, Flo already prepping for it at the middle line. Um, Gyro Copy will most certainly have to buy back, I think. Lina, of course, doesn't have it, but she'll respawn fast enough thanks to the Bloodstones of efforts. But it is still Roche, it is still Aegis and Cheese. Of course, the ultimates are down on the side of Empire, at least three of them. And the Omni Slash being the critical one, which actually took down the Gyrocopter. Uh, cheese, I think, they, I think they know, but just making sure. Yeah, Nofi is going to come pick up the Cheese and hold it for his carry. So yeah, here it is. It's going to push down the mid and see what they can get out of this. Now it's just a case of trying to clear out as many waves as you possibly can. For Empire anyway. And a case for Liquid just to try and defend high ground at this point. You don't want to buy back, you don't know, you don't want to expend anything unnecessarily. Do you do you potentially think about giving up a lane of racks just for Empire to be sort of, you know, happy, satisfied with what they've got? Or do you think Empire will just try and take everything from Liquid here? I think Empire will try to take everything. They have the Aegis and they have ultimates coming back up now, so I think this is their timing. Gyro still holding onto that. There's the glyph onto mid racks. Yeah, I don't think I don't think he's gonna buy back. If he buys back, there's like no chance of winning this game because he really needs that next item. And if he doesn't buy back, then they can at least wait for Empire to be like in a bad position, and then they can engage with a with a respawn. And there's one lane gone. Resolution. Aegis. Refresher is on cooldown now though, so we've got to remember there's no double Sonic Wave. Hex or BKB. And Matumba Man is on the front lines here, just trying to pressure them a little bit outside of this tier 3 with a glimpse and hook shot in. The call down is good onto 4 as well. The Ice Blast going into the back onto Resolution. He blinks away and avoids the initial hit, but he still gets hit by the trail. And now Flo with the BKB is running forward onto Fata, but the, the, the Lina just turns and fights! Silent's dead! He's got nothing left to give! And the fact that Queen of Pain has bailed on the rest of her teammates, ditched and left to die. Team Liquid. Everything was perfect. On the money with hookshot and glimpse. Separated the fight. And they just killed heroes one by one. Empire didn't know what hit them. Wow. You know, I, I actually... Um, I forgot about the fact that Resolution's refresher wasn't up. And I was thinking because they backed, I was wondering, clicking through the heroes, what, what spells they're missing. Because I thought they could take the fight for sure. And yeah, sure enough, the refresher not being there was meant that uh, as soon as his first PKB was up, he just has to run. He can't yep. fight anymore. And it doesn't help the fact that they got initiated on and Silent had to Omni Slash during the duration of his BKB. So that's like a complete waste of his BKB actually. And that really killed their ability ability to fight after like five seconds. Honestly, Fata has been cycling through items so often. I keep having to remind myself what he had previously. He, he just sold the Bloodstone for the Refresher, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. yeah, This is what happens when your Lina gets too farmed, I guess. And he has enough money for buyback, which is in 30 seconds. <gasps> Insane stuff. So now we're looking at double Laguna Blade. So what is that? 1700 damage? If he focuses it on one target, yeah it is. But here it is. It, it might be the game ending fight. And Cheap Stick actually gets expended here with nothing to cover for it. That's down for 30. And Resolution doesn't really want to refresh just for that to come back up again. Liquid prepping. Making sure they've got the positioning right here for any kind of engagement. But I think they want to bait Empire into a choke point. Get them up onto high ground where they've got vision, where they know what's happening. Don't want Empire to be dictating the terms of the fight in these scenarios. While Empire, it's the, it's the situation where you're hemmed in your base. You've got to defend top, mid. You can't really go and smoke at this point. And that's a big item. 
Jirax, we've seen multiple times over the past 56 minutes, or well, the past, let's say 30 minutes, half an hour. Static Storms go down on the Juggernaut and Queen of Pain. They pop BKB, and Empire just sort of laugh it off, you know? They shrug their shoulders and go, yep, yeah, okay, you got us a little bit, but we've got BKBs. Now if Jirax, like that, that is a game-winning item, 100%. If Jirax can get that Static Storm onto one of those heroes, the game is almost one for Liquid. Right, right. And you know, they, with that, with the smoke going in, they have the daytime vision. They might get the jump to do so. Silent, he doesn't have buyback. He just came out. Ooh. There it is. Hook shot onto illusions. He's still spinning though. And with a the cooldown there, Static Storm is not going to be in time. Mind Control's turned back onto forces over the cogs. And he'll escape. Only to be hit by the ice shards on the retreat. Liquid though. Time to bail. You can't continue on with this. The glimpse is cancelled out by Resolution's BKB. Here comes the Hexonic Wave with the Scream to follow, and he refreshes up. Stunned, though, by Fata. Refreshes. Laguna Blades up again. And now with no fear, Fiends Grip Fata, he's got the control onto him. Flow trying to battle through, and Silent shreds him with a bash. Is an Omni Slash ready now. But Summer Man's got nothing left to give Satanic up, but he's hexed. He's stunned. He's locked. He's killed. And with buyback on Lena and the Gyro, glimpse back on the Tusk, but Jirax cannot TP away. Can't complete. They've got two heroes to come back to life here, and Empire versus Liquid. This game number four, back and forth. No idea who's going to win this one, but it might be Empire. Rampaging down the middle lane, looking for tier fours maybe here. They don't expect Lena and Gyro to pop their heads back over the ridge. Oh man, it's a nail-biting series indeed. Game four, here we go. Last fight. Pull down. Slow down, but Matumba Man blinked upon. Weapon Y, he's the Tusk on the front lines. Ice Blast is going to be pretty decent. I'm not sure exactly how that was. Tusk is pushed back. Sent a little bit further away and the hook shot's good. Mind Control, they're going to find a secondary one. The kill onto Flo, no buyback. Broodmother and Bane down. Silent, he's being chased. If they can catch this hero. Doesn't look like it's going to be easy though. He's got BKB, Manta and Spin. Two forms of magic immunity. He'll try and spin away this homing missile. He'll succeed as well. Fata still chasing him down though, looking for the catch, looking for the Shiva's guard, anything just to try and slow the juggernaut. But resolution silent, they escape. <laughs> yeah, no problem, man. Don't worry. Yeah. Right. Thanks for having me, and sure. uh, I hope you enjoy the remainders of this game. Looks like it's going to go for some time, but it could <laughs> all end in a snap as well. Yeah, with uh, so. with with the delays we had, uh, it's understandable. No problem. Yeah. See you, man. Take care. Yeah, we uh we had a pretty long game three, game four. A lot of uh, a lot of delays, a lot of pauses. So, uh, clairvoyance. He scheduled his time, and we went a little bit over. And we even went over in this game, getting onto an hour already. Game number four of a five game series. And honestly, both of these teams, they are desperate to try and get some get some wins out of their belt. First place D2CL season six. Empire. They've been struggling recently, but against Liquid here, they've looked like game number one and two were just complete complete stomps by Liquid, to be perfectly honest. Game number three and four, they've turned up to play. They've actually brought their gear. They've decided that they're gonna pick heroes, play Dota. Team Liquid. And uh, not, uh, not too easy to take down, though. If you look at this, Mind Control Invis hiding away. He is a little bit behind, and this is usually their playmaker. Play oh, the he is their playmaker. But usually on Clockwork and Spirit Breaker and Broodmother, he gets an inordinate amount of farm. He is like third or fourth on the net worth board the majority of times. Even, uh, even ahead of the enemy mid laner or carry a lot of the time. But this, uh, this game, look at him. Behind the Disruptor, underneath the Ancient Apparition. He's not had a stellar game. It's been a little bit tough for him. 1 and 14. He's been hook shutting in. He's had some spectacular initiations and openings onto these team fights, but it just hasn't really worked out for him. And now both teams mirroring each other here in the opponent's jungles. And Liquid. Are they doing it? Empire need to strike. I'm not sure when they'll do it. So this Broodmother's in the same kind of boat as that Clockwork. Clockwork a little bit more mobile, a little more utility to him. Flow on his brood. Had a decent early game. Really had that uh, had that lane where, where he wanted it exactly. Oh, Empire. They've shoved in bot. If no one comes back to defend this, they'll know. They'll know the liquid is still hanging around up on this top lane. And if they show, in fact, Fata maybe gets scattered out here. Mind control definitely will be seen. 
And Empire wrapping in from the back end, but some man is waiting, trying to get the position right for the cooldown. Silent. He's been spotted, Radiant Observer what sees them all, the Shiva's guard, BKB's popped though, but Tumba Man turns and the hook shot's onto Silent, if they can zap him down, the double Laguna Blade's there, dead for 100 seconds, and Liquid have got it, but Tumba Man is shredded by the Sonic Wave, but the Resolution is stunned up, he's held in place, BKB popped up back with a refresh orb, and Matu, Lotus Orb, and run them down, no fear, E bladed up, and Glimpse back, Brood buys back, but Empire loses 4, buy back on Brood, but Liquid, They've got five alive, and they're looking now to take down Throne. Tier four's target. Next port of call. Let's go, boys. Throne standing, but not for too long. Juggernaut, not available. Queen of Pain, no spells. Has a hex. Sonic Wave in 14. This is now down to the Tusk, Brood, and Queen of Pain. Tusk has brought back. Snowball's back in. Mind Control. He's going to get the Snowball reversal with the Lotus Orb and Weapon Y. He buys back into death. The Throne is dying. Liquid have done it. Empire. Empire, great showing from them, but Team Liquid, what a freaking game. The series ends 3-1. to one. Liquid fully deserved that, but Empire put up a bloody good show, honestly. Congratulations, Team Liquid are your D2CL Season 6 winners. Empire, second place. Oh, that last fight. Clairvoyance left at just the wrong time. We were just about to finish, but no one could have guessed that. We had the same situation back and forth, back and forth. Roshan, take and steal. Until at the very end, comes down to that double zap from the Laguna Blade of Lena. Onto Silent with no buyback. But that's it for tonight. That's it for D2CL. And that's it for these teams. And uh, pretty much Dota 2 until the Major, which starts... Not too long from now. Countdown, the timer is ticking over on joindoto.com. As well as the coverage page from D2CL if you want to go and check how the group stage is, how the, uh, how the brackets went. But thanks for watching, guys. I've been Durka, my co-caster Clairvoyance, who uh, unfortunately had to leave about a minute and a half ago before the game ended. But uh, you can check me out on Twitter and Facebook, at Durka Dota. Hopefully you guys had a good time. See you, uh, see you in a little while. I'm going to be at the Major. I'll be there as a spectator, hanging out, chilling with people. You want to come and say hi? I'll be there. Just tweet at me. And, uh, yeah. Next games, I think, are going to be coming up after the Major. We've got a couple of defense games. But we'll see what happens after that. So, good night. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And uh, hopefully, see you at the Major.